graders that are 11 years old. Let's assume that each are wearing activity trackers such as this. One big concern in every community is child safety and security. So as a parent, wouldn't it be great if you could find out when your kid arrived at home and whether or, or whether or not they made that particular bus for the day? So again, all of these are opt-in services. So let's say Aiden's parents and Foster's parents opt into this. So you can see uh, the view from the high school, from the school administrator or a teacher on what bus, uh, what bus both of these boys are on, how many students are on that particular bus that day, who's been dropped off already and shaded in, and then who's still on the bus, which is going to highlight it. So the next step, oops, oops, go back. play this out. So Aiden is the next stop. And so as they're approaching Aiden's stop, Foster's getting ready to get off at Aiden's stop. So how does it know that? So it knows that because it picks up Foster's activity, it's picking up there's a deviation in the route, and Foster is getting off at Aiden's stop. So if Foster's mom calls the school and says, I don't think my son made it, no one know where he is, she can communicate that he got off at 315 over at Aiden's stop. So what's the network doing that's just go behind the scenes? It's really compiling information from different sources and housing that in the cloud and really creating profiles of people. It's very dynamic. Based on what they do and everything that they like, it's compiling all of this data and information. So for example, it combines um, Foster's uh, social network and also it could connect it from his, uh, connect it, um, his contacts and his IP phone. Connect his medical information in terms of his physician and also any sorts of sensitivity, whether it's allergies or medications or things of that sort. Can also uh, track his activity in terms of what he watches, what he likes on Facebook, some of the things that he enjoys in terms of setting preferences, whether it comes to food or just entertainment. And his parents can also set a parental rating as well in terms of the content that he can be exposed to. It also tracks things like how much time he's spending doing his homework versus TV viewing. So for Foster, he's spending a lot more time watching TV than doing homework. So that's not that way for him for Foster. <coughs> so Aiden and Foster arrive at Aiden's house. And so Aiden's mom is at work and she gets a notification sent to her on her uh, smart tablet. So here it lets her know that Aiden and Foster made it uh, to Aiden's house about two minutes ago. Some of the possibilities you can see that you, should, you can have pen video footage to that, you can just uh, pen a photograph of both of the boys in the house, just for um, verification. And then also there's a new allergy warning that it's here, so you should go ahead and click on that. And so what you'll see is that Foster has a gluten allergy, so um, something to be mindful of. And then she can also manage her household activities. So for example, she's going to take a look at her pantry and grocery list. So as Steve talked about with the sensors, you can have the sensors here embedded to uh, next to a product code or a barcode. And it can capture information such as product weight, the ingredients in the product, and nutritional information. So here, looking at the weight category, so the weight of the product uh, diminishes as you use a specific product. So you can see if you're low on inventory on specific household items. So here we're low on peanut butter, we're low on orange juice. You can further categorize the information by type, whether it's gluten-free, dairy, vegan, etc. So if Austria has uh, gluten sensitivity, so let's take a look at the gluten-free options. So what you're going to see, it's going to sort the items by all those that are gluten-free with the uh, replenishment. And so one of the things that you can do here is you're low on items, you can have a relationship established with a big box on retailer next door, and you can actually buy the products online. So let's look at dinner. So options, you can make gluten-free meatloaf or chili, that won't really get the family excited, so what she's going to do is go ahead and order a pizza. So she's going to select City Place Pizza. Which then finds out if you it's have any parking tickets as well, it's going to go ahead and go on. Okay, so that's a standing family order in terms of the medium pizzas, and so because Foster's in the house, we'll go ahead and select the uh, gluten-free cheese pizza. So what's interesting and challenging about uh, people who work from home, is that if you want to schedule a delivery, it's really challenging logistically to do that because you're not sure what time you're going to leave the office, you're not sure what time traffic is going to get there. So what you can do with the Internet of Everything is with location-based tracking that connects to a wireless network, again, Cisco provides that network and these connections, is that when uh, Foster's, uh, sorry, Aiden's mom leaves the house, you can pick up where she's located and when she's going to approximately reach the home. That can synchronize with the information um, that's being sent to the delivery place so they'll know when she's in proximity to her house, they can go ahead and process and dispatch the pizza out for delivery. 
and just basically meet her at home, we don't wonder that she can set within five to ten minutes or fifteen minutes of her arriving in the house. So that's what she's going to do. She's going to have the pizza meet her at home. And so within just a few clicks of her on her smart device, she can manage her dinner, she can manage the activities, and have peace of mind so she can go on and resume her work day. So let's get back to our boys, Aiden and Foster. So they're hungry after school, and so they see a box of cookies and uh oh, what's happening here? So what's happening is that the data being generated from his activity tracker is being uploaded to the Cisco cloud. The data generated from the activity center what? and the uh, box of cookies is also being uploaded to the cloud. The internet of everything bridges these two pieces of data together and lets uh, Foster know in real time that he's in the presence of something that has gluten and it sends a warning. What's interesting as well is that the warning can also be sent to other people in Foster's network, such as his mom, his teacher, and his sisters or brothers. So, uh, so if Foster says, I'm just gonna have one cookie. It's gonna be okay. What happens is his mom who has this warning can call um, Foster and say, don't you dare eat that for me. <laughs> so you can see the relevance of this type of uh, use case for kids who have life-threatening allergies, such as a peanut allergy or somebody who's diabetic. Uh, with insulin or any sort of health circumstance. So, potential uncomfortable situation reverted, and so the boys go to the living room and start to watch TV. So I'm going to have to ask for a volunteer to hold this basketball. Would so you do that? Thank you much. So, the uh, boys turn on the TV and it displays the last channel that they watched, which was a uh, racing channel. So here it is, four cars, very exciting. And so, Aiden approaches the TV, and the IP network is either picking up from his uh, activity tracker or, or smartphone, that he's approached the IP TV. And you'll see here, it lists his TV profile and his favorite shows, and also gives recommendations based on what's available from either the linear channels or from his uh, cloud. <coughs> so now Foster approaches the TV. And as you can see, it'll pop up Foster's uh, channel preferences, including information on how much TV he's watched today. So what you'll see is what happens is the internet of everything is pulling the, connecting the data that's in the cloud in terms of Foster's profile and Aiden's profile, and in real time making recommendations on shows that both of them will enjoy. So the boys don't have to haggle over who gets the remote and who gets to control the uh, program. So let's bring in the basketball onto the scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that from you. Thank you very much. <coughs> so let's go ahead and just assume that Spalding, when they made this basketball, invented a sensor here. And so they could have so relationships with, say, the day, NBA for unique content and programming. They could have a relationship with Big Box. So when they offer this basketball in the store, they can get access to unique uh, promotional offers or specialized content. So here what we're finding <coughs> is that the basketball has generated its own programming guide. And it's showing here um, a viewing of a cloud from the cloud DVR and an NBA All-Star game. So what's going to happen is we're going to go ahead and select that. Lo and behold, we see the uh, All-Star game. So a couple things are happening here. In real time, the, the, what's being collected by the network and being uploaded to this uh, video skip call is the fact that Aiden is watching TV. He selected this program. It's going to talk about how long he's been watching this program. And also going to connect the information and the fact that his parents have an account with Big Box. And so Aiden, if he wants to, he can go ahead and buy the jersey. But Aiden has uh, made the mistake of buying everything that he likes on TV in one month uh, caused a really high bill for his parents. So what his parents have done is created a wish list for Aiden. So anything he likes on TV, they can just go ahead and add it to his uh, Big Box retailer wish list. So if Aiden gets good grades or, you know, he's um, it's his birthday, all the parents have to do is go back to his wish list and they can go ahead and purchase that item. And then we go back to watching TV. So after watching TV for a while, the boys get bored, they want to do something else. So Aiden pulls up his activity tracker to see how much daylight is remaining. Can't they get in a game of basketball? And so his mom outside. can configure his uh, activity. So if he doesn't get at least 60% uh, percent of act his recommended daily activity per day, they can limit how much uh, TV and internet they can do. So every time he approaches a TV, he might have limits on it. He can only watch 15 minutes. Same thing with the internet. So let's take a spotlight on what the remaining daylight thing is in the middle. So what it's going to do, it's going to um, pull the and synchronize the activity from Aiden and Foster who give uh, with location-based services on um, the amount of daylight that's still remaining. And based on their combined preferences, um, what are some recommendations? Ride bikes, shoot hoops, visit the playground. So they go outside to shoot hoops. But of course they are so excited, they run out of the living room and they leave the TV on and they leave all the lights on. 
So not great from an energy management perspective. So after a few minutes, Aiden's mom uh, gets a notification on her smart tablet. And it lets um, her know that all the lights are on in the house and that all the TVs are apparently on in the house. So what she can do is she can virtually uh, manage this. And so at and Digital Life, which is powered by Cisco, allows you to do these types of applications. And if you look at the back screen here, we can even get more discrete in terms of energy management. So the sensors that we have in, like, let's say, the box of cookies and in the milk, you can also embed those sensors at manufacturing into appliances. So just when you have a, a home network and you buy a new PC, you can add that new PC to your home network. So similar in concept with these devices, you can add all these things to your home network. You can have the service provider like MTG can have relationships with the utility companies, and the network and the infrastructure at Cisco brings all this information together. So at and can create that interface that you see that can be accessible to the consumer. You can also have relationships uh, in terms of Adam's mom. So if there's a sensor in the light bulb letting her know that the light's about to extinguish, she can also buy light bulbs from Big Bear. So how does this all come together? It really comes together with Cisco and service providers. And together, we at Cisco provide the network, the infrastructure, the cloud, and also the access in terms of the Wi-Fi network and fixed network to enable these sorts of things. And so the service providers have a relationship with you, the consumer, and able to deliver these things to you. So how, how big is this opportunity? I mean, where is this really going to go? So we believe in the next 10 years, uh, is that consumers are going to spend $2.9 trillion on these types of applications, some of which we've shown here today. So if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them after the presentation. Please do get your badges scanned because we are giving away